All right. 5.5, solving rational inequalities. A rational inequality is a statement that one rational expression is less than or greater than another rational expression. All right. So in the previous section, we looked at rational equations, and now we're looking at rational inequalities. So what we need to do here is solving an inequality means finding all the possible values of the variable that satisfy the inequality. That being the case, to solve a rational inequality algebraically, you're asked to rearrange inequality so that one side is zero. So that's exactly what we did in 5.4, which we're going to stay consistent with and continue on with 5.5. You're to combine the expression using a common denominator and then finally use a table to determine where, where the in which parts make the in which intervals make the inequality true. So that's where it's different from the previous section. In the previous section, we talked about it being equal to zero. In this case, what we're trying to do is comparing it against zero to find out whether it's greater than zero or less than zero. So very similar to what we did in the previous chapter with respect to um, finding the uh, where the equation where the function is above or below zero. All right. Let's look at the next first example. Solve the inequality. So here's our inequality, and what we have here just pausing there for a minute, is that we have here x plus 5 is greater than negative x over 2x plus 6. All right, so we look at this question right here. What's the first thing we see? Well, we see this symbol. But if we were to treat this symbol like an equal sign, we see that one side is a whole, kind of like a whole number, and the other side is like a fraction. We know that we have to look at the denominator and state the restrictions on that denominator. That's what this box is for. We have to state the restrictions on every denominator because of the fact that the restriction, if we remember in terms of graphs, this turns out to be some sort of vertical asymptote or a hole. So it affects our graph. What we need to make sure is that we state this restriction in here. The restriction for this is going to be x cannot equal negative 3. Knowing that, we can continue our problem. So, what is the first goal? Just like it was in the last section, we want to move everything over to make it equal to zero, or make it one side zero. So we're going to move everything to the left side and make it greater than zero. So this is what we did. We subtracted what was on this side. Okay, so let's look back again. So we subtracted this whole thing right here. Now, next you're to do is to find a common denominator. This part right here in the front does not have a denominator. Our denominator is going to be 2x plus 6, or 2 times x plus 3 if you want. So x plus 5 times 2x plus 6 turns out to be x times 2x plus 6 is 2x squared plus 6x. 5 times 2x plus 6 is 10x plus 30. And then plus x, why is it plus x? Because look folks, you've got a minus over here with a minus over here, and that turns into plus all over 2x plus 6 is greater than 0. Remember that we're not going to get rid of that denominator but we're going to find a common denominator so that the numerator, we have one numerator with one denominator set to zero. So we do this, we collect like terms, and then once we collect like terms, we can factor the numerator if it's possible. Turns out for us, lo and behold, it's factorable. Let's say it wasn't, folks. Let's on the off chance that the numerator is not factorable. What would you do? Well, we still need the roots of the numerator because the roots will help us determine what intervals we need to use. So you would use the roots using the quadratic formula. You will find the roots of the numerator and use those exact values to set up our intervals. 
Fortunately for us, we have nice numbers, and we can find out that we're going to test the values around negative 3, negative 5 over 2, and negative 6. Those are the three values we need to test. So we set the interval, and we set it from left to right. So our interval table is from negative infinity to negative 6, negative 6 to negative 3, negative 3 to negative 5 over 2, negative 5 over 2 to infinity. We're going to use set some test points. So these are the values in within those intervals. And then we're going to take that whole equation, yes folks, the whole equation, and put that into our chart. Each of these pieces will have the values plugged in and we will find the answer to each of these. <clears throat> so I'm going to color code each one. So as I substitute the test point in, you'll notice that the color will correspond to the color of the brackets. So when I plug in negative 10 into the black one, I'm going to get negative value. Negative 10 into the green one, I'm going to get a, a negative value in the green. Negative 10 into the red, and I get a negative. If there was a negative sign right here, okay, right here at this 2, so example a negative down here, that would also change our expression, so we would have to have a negative. You'll see an example of this in a little bit. In the meantime, we have to compare this against this right here. We're comparing it against greater than zero. We have a negative, a negative, and a negative. What will that yield us? Well, that should be less than zero, a negative. And we plug in the test points for each of the other values, and these are what we get. These test points, what we have to do is we have to set our therefore statement. Once we com completed the table, we set up our therefore. Our therefore is based on the original equation, which is what I have here, the original um, inequality. And I say when the following things occur. So we're compared it against a greater than zero. So we're looking for this interval, folks, and this interval. Once we know, and we can state that. So when x is between negative 6 and negative 3, and when x is greater than negative 5 over 2. So if we looked at a number line, you can see the number line right here that the number line is showing that exact same values. These are the values for which this inequality statement is true. All right, let's look at another example. So here's another example, part B. We're comparing it here. First thing we do, state the restrictions. Next thing we're going to do is move everything to one side with a common denominator. And that's exactly what we did here. Common denominator, set it, we're check, comparing it against zero on the right hand side. Everything moved to the left hand side. And now we're going to expand and then collect like terms. All right, expand, collect like terms. And lo and behold, we can get some factors here. The factor, we common factor negative x times x plus 2. And what we're going to do is create our table. Our interval chart goes from negative infinity up to, now don't forget folks, we're comparing this value, this value, and the restrictions. So the restrictions on these two here. So we start with the leftmost value, and we're comparing from negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2, to negative 4 over 3, negative 4 over 3 to negative 1, negative 1 to 0, and 0 to infinity. So the negative 2 comes from this value right here, just point to it, from this value right here. The negative 4 over 3 comes from this value over here, the negative 1 comes from over here, and the 0 comes from the x alone. So now we have our test points, and we use our equation. So again, we're going to color code it. Once we have the test points, we're going to color code each piece. And folks, we have to include this negative as well. Very important. So the negative has its own color. Then I'm going to color it in. So all of these will have a negative value to start with. That's where the red negative comes from. Next one, the x is green. 
and depending on the value of the test point, though it's the, the sign of the test point, these will be true. And then we have the next part, which is in blue, and we plug in the test points there. All over the denominators, plug in the test point for the first one, and then we plug in the test point for the second one. And what we can get from there, so you have a choice of doing all of it in each category at once, or we could do each particular factor separately and then plug it into all of these values. Either way, you're going to get the same answer, folks. This is just another way for you to try this. And we find out that these are the different values over here. And last but not least is the last one there. We're going to compare when it's greater than zero. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for when it's greater than zero. Well, that's going to be true when it's this interval and this interval. So that's what we're looking for here. So the function, the, sorry, the inequality is true when the following happens. X is between negative 2 and negative 4 over 3, and when X is between negative 1 and 0. And looking at the number line, we have a number line, we plug in the values, and this is what we're looking for. All right, next part. Remember to please note that you may need to use the quadratic formula, as I mentioned earlier, to determine the intervals. Here is your quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this exact, uh, this quadratic formula will yield us exact roots, which we must use for the intervals. Use the exact roots and not the decimals for the intervals. We can use the decimal to approximate a test point, but please do use the exact roots for your intervals. All right, folks, that's the end of the video. Take care.